Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and this video is how to install Python Google App Engine in Ubuntu and then configure it to run with Eclipse. The outcomes for this video would be to discuss getting a Google App Engine account. This video does not cover obtaining an account. Download and install Python Google App Engine. Down and install the YAML editor for Eclipse. You're going to have to create a an app.yaml file for Google App Engine. Then I'll create a simple Python Google App Engine Hello World program and run Google App Engine locally from within Eclipse. Then create an application ID on a Google App Engine server on the web. And then finally upload the Google App Engine Hello World program to Google App Engine on the web. So the requirements what you're going to need is a Google App Engine account you'll probably need a cell phone to obtain an account because what Google does is they send you a message on your cell phone and that will uh, open up your account and without a cell phone you just simply can't get a text. Ubuntu desktop with Eclipse, Kepler and PyDev installed. This video uses Ubuntu 13.04. Python 2.7 well, that comes with Ubuntu desktop so if you're using Ubuntu you already have that and, in, and an internet connection. Additional info, you've got the Google App Engine for developers. You've got the page for where the downloads are. Then I've also included the pricing page. And then here is a uh, Google App Engine Python Hello World example using Eclipse. And that's for the older version, but it still gives you some good information. Disclaimer is while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that. Well, work with all combinations of hardware and software out there. So I've included a disclaimer. If you wish you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. This is the front page for our Google App Engine. Right up here is the uh, actual uh, URL. The nice part about Google App Engine is that you create a dynamic web application and host it on the web free of charge. Google allows you to create an account and allows you to put it up there and you can show it off or uh, you can see if it's working. But you have two ways to run an application. One's on your local machine where you uh, debug it, get it working, and then finally upload to the Google App Engine in the cloud. And before you can do that you're going to have to sign up for an account and click on sign up and of course you require an email, a password, or here where it says sign up this is the information they want, a birthday, a gender. One of the things that is required for a Google App Engine account is a mobile phone. They say they will let you have one without a mobile phone, but it's pretty much required. And I have never tried to get an account without a phone. Of course, you've got to capture it. But you're going to have to get an account on your own because I can't go through this and create, create another account. And once you have your account created, then that will allow you to post your application up on the web. Of course, if you just want to work locally, you can download the Google App Engine and host it on your local server. This is an Ubuntu 13.04 desktop with Eclipse installed and PyDev also. It's got 1.5 gigabyte of memory. But if you want to use a little bit less memory, you can use Ubuntu 12.04. I found that Ubuntu 13.04 seems to require more memory to work as fast as Ubuntu 12.04. And of course, Eclipse is also a memory hog. Anyway, to download Google App Engine, open up a Fox web browser. And this right here is the page. But we would go to the download page. If you want to go directly, it's right up here. DevelopersGoogle.com App Engine Downloads. And then we're going to go to the Google App Engine SDK for Python. Right here. And simply go to Linux and other platforms because we're using Ubuntu. And save the file. Click OK course once it's downloaded come back Firefox indicates that 
it's downloaded so we're not going to need the browser anymore simply close that get it out of the way and we'll go to the files we'll go to downloads and here it is Google App Engine dot zip so let's open with the archive manager click on it and we're going to extract it and we're going to put it I like to put it in the actual home directory in this case this is my directory because one of the things when you send files to the Google App Engine on the network you're going to have to also include a password and this password if you're using Eclipse it, you can actually view the password in Eclipse it's not hidden so I go to Mike and simply which is the home directory or whatever directory you're in and simply click extract and files are extracted and I could quit or let's go show the files and here we have a directory called Google App Engine open it and here we have all our files two of which we we're going to be using dev app server pi and there's another one that's fairly that we're going to be setting up apcfg.py Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. Next section of the video, I'm going to start Eclipse and begin setting up Eclipse to run Google App Engine. So in this section of the video, I'm going to create a Google App Engine project. Start Eclipse. I'm going to change the workspace, and the workspace I'm going to change it to is Google Apps. And the easiest way to do this is right here when we select the workspace and it'll create it for us. Click OK. So here's the uh, Kepler and it's got PyDev installed. We'll simply close it. And so let's create a uh, project for the Google App Engine, a Hello World project really. And we're going to go down here to PyDev, open that up and call it PyDev Google App Engine Project. Click Next. And we're going to put in um, GAE Hello World. Now, one thing you don't want to have is any spaces in here uh, for uh, Google App Engine. Does not like those spaces. We're going to choose the Python interpreter. Default, of course, we're going to use the default grammar version 2.7, Python 2.7, and We'll configure an interpreter and just basically use auto config. And I'm going to select all not in workspace and click OK. Now it's going to trundle along for a bit and finally it'll uh, finish the Python path. So we're going to uh, create a source folder and add it to the Python path. So we're going to click Next. And let's go to the Google App Engine directory, and in this case, it's going to be in Google App Engine. And we'll click OK here, and we're going to select all. So it looks like it's pretty much selected all. And you, you can choose which ones you want to select, but uh, this select all and won't worry right now about uh, something not being correct here. And we'll click OK. Now the next thing you can do is you, you should click finish here now, but I'm just going to show you uh, what can happen if you click next. And right here it says please select a template to create the project. And all these projects right here, empty project, ask log on, these are for an older version of Google App Engine. So it's not going to work. If you set these empty projects up, it's not going to work with the current version of Google App Engine. So we're just going to leave that pretty much blank and you can put something here if you want but we're just going to leave the everything default click finish this kind of project is associated with a PyDev perspective 
We're going to remember my decision. Click yes. Now here we go to and select source. Now I'm going to right click and create a new Python module. Well, Py actually it says PyDev, but it's a Python module. We're going, it's going to be located here as far as a package. Leave it blank. As far as a name, we're going to call it GAE underscore hello underscore world. Finish. Now in a second you'll have some template choices to come up. When they come up, we're not going to pick any of the templates because they haven't they don't have any meaning for us here in uh, Google App Engine. And so we're just going to pick the empty template. Click OK. So now we're ready to write our first uh, Python code for GAE Hello. It's basically a Hello World. And so we're going to do an import web app 2 and set up a class. Call it main page because we'll inherit from web app two dot request handler and we can go down here and, and pick that one. Definition get self. Notice how it fills everything in. Of course, if you're familiar with uh PyDev, you'll know that it's commonly does that. And we're going to go to response, enter, dot headers, bracket, and we're going to put in the content type. Type equal text plain. I guess about plain correctly. And we'll put it self dot again we've got the response dot write hello G A E world. Or Google App Engine. So the next thing we've got to do is basically give this a name here, this application name. And this I put in app, but it, you could say, I'll show you in a little bit, and we're going to change that name just to show you where it fits with the uh, YAML file. App equal web app two dot w and we're be SGI application, opening parentheses, opening bracket, whoops, not curly Q bracket, just regular bracket, opening parentheses, and this is where it's going to be located right off the main URL, comma, then we've got the class. So when we hit that, we'll go to the class, put another comma in here, closing bracket, another comma, and D bug equal true. Basically this is going to be dropped when we put the Google App Engine on the web. So let's go ahead and save this. So we're finished right here with the uh, JE Hello World and it's going to save it as hello world.py. So the next thing we have to do is uh, get a YAML editor. Click so we can create the YAML file. We don't need a YAML editor but it puts in nice colors and hopefully keeps you from making a mistake. So type in YAML, click go, and here we're going to install Yetit. So let's install it. Confirm. We're going to accept. Finish. And when it's through installing we're going to have to restart uh, well, first off, you got the unsigned content. Agree to that. But uh, when it finishes installing, 
then you're going to have to restart Eclipse. So you will need to restart Eclipse. So let's go ahead and restart it. Here we are at the workspace, Google Apps, click OK. So here we are in the Eclipse again. So this time we'll click on Source, right click, New, File. Here we are, and you see that we're in the correct parent folder. And the name of this file has got to be app.yaml. Click Finish. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a comment. Uh, GAE likes it when the application is all the application ID is all lower case and numbers. I'm just going to put that comment in because I've had some problems if I put in uppercase. So the first thing you're going to do is application and let's give it a name. This is going to be a temporary name. We're going to have to, we will be creating or you will be creating a name for your application later on for when it goes up to the GAE cloud. We'll call it uh, GAE HW for GAE Hello World version colon space one runtime colon space Python 27, not 2.7, Python 27, API underscore ver version, colon space 1, and thread safe, colon space equal true. In this case, we've got a small t. Handlers, colon, dash, space, URL forward slash or a dot star. In this case, it would be just your basic URL. And two, three spaces here. Script colon. This time we have to give it, we have to actually use the GAE hello world, the Python file name, and then a dot. And then let's go to that, open that up, and see where it says app. And whatever this is, that comes after the dot. So let's, I'll, I'll just put this a uh, app XY, whatever I want to name it. I just, the only reason I'm adding this XY is to make sure that you don't, has no reference to this app.yaml. Okay, but whatever's here, that goes into your app.yaml file. Open. And I'm going to paste it. Oops, I didn't uh, copy it. Right click, copy, and then paste. Sorry about that. So now we've got the app YAML file and we've got the Python file and they're ready to go. If I've done everything right, we can, should be able to now configure Google App Engine to run with Eclipse. So now I have to create a run configuration and I'm going to click here for run configurations. We'll go down here for Python Google App Run. Click New. And I'm going to call this GAE Local. Go to Project, I'm going to Browse, G GAE Hello World. Click OK. Main Module, this is where I need the Google App Engine devappserver.py. In this case, if I hit Browse, I can't get to it. So cancel. So my way of getting to it is to open up a terminal. Let's go over here, Control Alt and T, and that'll get your terminal to open up. And so I'm going to go to do an ls, and cd to Google App Engine, do an ls, and the application here is devappserver.py that you 
should be running. So I'm going to do a print working directory. Copy. Put this here for main module. Paste. Forward slash. And then dev app server dot pi. Right click. Copy again. Paste. Go to arguments. Now for arguments I've put dollar sign project underscore loc location close curly q bracket s source. And this is called GAE local. So now I'm going to run it and hopefully I've done everything right. It's going to ask to select resources, save. Always, I always, always save resources for launching. Click OK. Ask if you want to allow Dev App Server to check for updates. Click over here. Type in yes. And now it's running. One thing I want to point out: if sometimes you're trying to get it to run and it says can't find something, make sure that you got GAE Hello World this uh, directory. Point so. Now it's running at localhost 8080, and the admin server is running at localhost 80. So let's open up Firefox web browser, key in localhost colon 80, 80, and there it is. Hello GAE world. Not nothing really fancy here. And if you want to take a look at the uh, admin there's the admin and you can play around with that I'm just basically trying to this video that's beyond the scope of this video this video is just how to get everything set up and running so one thing to show here is that if I want to just change hello GAE world with a change all I have to do is put it into it save and when I go back to, uh, if I hit the default here, localhost 8080, it says, hello GAE world with a change. And that's pretty much it for getting the Google App Engine server to run locally. Next, we'll have to create an app and then push it up to the Google App Engine cloud. In this section, I'm going to create a, an application name for Google App Engine. So I just do a search for Google App Engine, and here it says, Welcome to AppEngine.Google.com. I simply click OK. Basically, what I have to do is put in a password. Sign in. Of course, I never want to remember a password. And then I've got a number of uh, applications there. So now I have to create an application. Here you, you can create up to 10 applications on this account. I, I looked at the new accounts and they didn't say 10 applications anymore so I'm not sure if that's true. So I'm simply going to say create an application. Now here's a situation with Google App Engine application identifier. It has to be a unique name across the entire world and then .appspot.com and that once you use it, if you use it and delete that application, you can't use that application identifier again. So my way of handling that was when I installed PyDev into Kepler, I just used a program that would create a bunch of application identifiers randomly. So let me open, let me have Eclipse right here, and this is all in the install PyDev in Eclipse. And I simply uh, run this, and here I've got five digits for I in range five. So 4ZPEO, copy, paste. And I'm going to check availability. So this application must be between 6 and uh, 30 characters. Sorry about that. Go to 6. Change the code in here. 6. And then we're going to run it again. I, I can pick any one of these. I'll put G3, RP. This is my way of creating a... Paste, and we'll check availability, and it's available. Application title, and it's GAE. 
hello world. And that's pretty much it. Keep in mind this right here you're going to have to put into your app YAML file. So I'm going to make sure I copy it again. Just make sure it's there. Create an application. So now it's, and so now it's created. And if you want to take the view to dashboard, this is basically the dashboard where you can go and check some more stuff out. And then you can always go back to my applications. And there it is. It's none deployed. So I'm going to sign out here. So we've created an application ID and we're ready to push it up to the Google App Engine Cloud. Before we do that, let's go to our app YAML file and see where it says application. This is where you have to put in your application ID. And in my case, it was G3RPKE. And that's pretty much it. Save this. Well, it should save it. So the next thing we're going to have to do is create a different run configuration that will uh, allow us to push this up to the cloud. And we're going to go to Run Configurations. Here's GAE Local. And we're going to duplicate it. And in this case, we're going to give it a new name. And we're going to call it GAE Cloud, just to keep them separate. Once we have that, now instead of the dev app server dot pi, which is a local server, we're going to come back to our terminal and we're going to use this appcfg.py. If you've already closed your terminal, you need to reopen it and go back here. Copy this file name and just stick it right here. Paste. You're still in the same directory and everything like here. Argument we're going to have to go to put in update and then a space after update and so now we're ready to run GAE Cloud click on run when you run it for the first time it's going to ask for a username or your email and a password. This is the username and password that you created when you first started your Google App Engine account. In my case, I didn't show that. And one of the reasons and one of the reasons I didn't show it is because the password shows up in clear text down here at the bottom. Basically it comes in here pretty much right in here at one of these right at this place right here and you're going to be asked for like I said your username and then your password but the password will show up in clear text in uh, Eclipse which you don't like but I guess you'll have to live with it and that's also another reason why is installed Google App Engine inside your local directory now once you've done that the first time if you don't turn your machine off, it'll automatically keep, you don't have to put it in again and again, which is what happened here as I've already ran it one time. So let's go check and see what we have. It would be at G3RPKE appspot.com. GR, I'm sorry, G. 3RPKE dot app spot dot com. Hit enter. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but um, because this is the same file that was already there, but just to verify, go back to Eclipse, go to Hello World again. G that has been updated. Click on save. The run configuration should probably take care of that for you. Click uh, click on GAE Cloud again. And here it goes. Putting it pushing it back up.
It just keeps checking if it's serving and finally completed update. So let's go back to the uh, browser and this is, you can see that that's all that is that's all you have to do to update it. So there you are. Uh, this has created a, a hello world application in Google App Engine and run it both locally and on the cloud configured to work with Eclipse. So I hope you enjoy Google App Engine because uh, although it's a little difficult to get started with it, it is free and you can play around with it just to see what you what you can create or if you're a teacher or something you can also have your students get free accounts putting something on the web. Anyway, thank you.